So I fell into this by accident. I was not knowledgeable in supplements, wasn't the least bit interested in D. I am a fanatic about sleep. That's what I'm interested in. Everybody in my practice who's seeing me, who I have now 2000 sleep studies and these young, healthy people who are just seeing me for headaches, they're all abnormal sleep studies and they all have low D. I had a real simple question. What would D and the D level have to do with this? And two people came back after I recommended some D and said, you know what? In about three weeks, my sleep was better. My headaches went away. So there was a clinical response to just adding D and that led to a long, complicated path. First off, when I started to do this, I had no education. The literature was absurdly confusing. Even the names of the things, everything is called vitamin D. Accidentally, I bought a book that had 365 forms of vitamin D. Like, how can, (laughs) what? Those are all pharmaceutically made types of things with different, so- I'm not an endocrinologist. I am a neurologist. I did not know anything about hormones. So the person that I followed at first was a guy named John Cannell, who was the first person to put a website up that said, isn't this the most ridiculous nomenclature you've ever seen? He spent a lot of time trying to understand it. And he was the guy that I was using. His comment was the 25-OH is quote unquote called the storage form. And there's a transition between 25 OH to 125 OH. And you can measure both of those in the blood. Now, the problem is that in actual fact, if you read the modern literature, especially a guy named Slominski, which is ironically in a dermatology department, but this guy is a brilliant biochemist. He has shown that there is a rainbow of types of Ds that are made on our skin when we are outside. There are probably 20 or 30 types of D that they are active in the skin and they are active in inflammation and they have more than one receptor. There isn't just a vitamin D receptor. Everybody just stopped. Not everybody, Slominski didn't. And interestingly, D can be act on by the same enzymes that act on the sex hormones because D is made from cholesterol and all the sex hormones are made from cholesterol. And the enzyme that takes pregnenolone to estrogen or testosterone, that enzyme is active on D and it makes all these other Ds and they can be measured in our blood. And he has shown what they hit, what receptor they hit, they're heavily involved in inflammation. What this means is most of the literature is ridiculously oversimplified. And the final message is we know very, very little about this chemical. Now, it's still important to us because your first question is, which is the absurdly normal question. Well, what's the normal level? Right. The answer is, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. But what I mentioned to you at first, which is really important, and you just reflected this, every single person who's using D has a level of physical symptomatology when it's better and when it's worse. My original question was very simple. And what happened to me was these two people came in and said, I took the vitamin D. My CPAP was helping my sleep a little I took the vitamin D three weeks later, I start to sleep better and my headaches went away. Two guys told me that in one week. So I go to the literature, I'm big into biochemistry and what I put in is sleep and vitamin D, no hits. This is in 2009, no hits for that. There are lots of them now. So I put in brain and vitamin D and I get to this guy named Walter Stump who has 30 years of publications about where are the vitamin D receptors and he showed back in the 90s that there are vitamin D receptors in all the sleep switches in the brainstem. So now I have not just two guys mentioning this to me, but I have a beautiful scientific study that shows these cells are listening for a D message. Now, 